how do we calculate the change in the magnetic flux? So there's two ways of doing it, right? Uh, one way you can say that uh, the change in the magnetic flux, right, uh, will be given as the magnetic flux final minus the magnetic flux initial, right? Uh, that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it, you can use uh, the EMF induced in the coil, right? Uh, that will be the EMF is equals to uh, minus N being the number of turns in the coil multiplied by the change in the magnetic flux divided by uh, the change in time. So in the second formula, if you have the change in time, you have the number of terms and you have the EMF induced, then you just solve uh, for the change in the magnetic flux, right? So that's how you use uh, the second formula. And then the first formula, this is how you use it. Let's say maybe uh, we changed uh, the angle, right? then uh, there's going to be a change in the magnetic flux and consequently you'll be saying magnetic flux final minus magnetic flux initial uh, to find that change, right? So in this question, uh, let's look at the information we have and see which one of these two options uh, we can go for. So here we are told that uh, a square induction coil with a side of three centimeters. So before we go any further, we have a square induction coil with a side length of three centimeters, right? So now we know fully well that we have an area uh, of that square, right? Uh, which we can calculate. And then it goes on to say uh, the coil has 400 uh, windings, right? So 400 windings, uh, that's just another name for 400 turns. So we have n is equals to uh, 400, right? And then uh, it goes on to say that uh, that coil is placed perpendicularly in a uniform magnetic field. What does perpendicularly in a uniform magnetic field tells us? It tells us that initially uh, the angle was equals to zero because if you place this because if you place it uh, perpendicularly in a magnetic field, then the induced EMF is at a maximum, right? So that angle should be equals to zero. And then it's roto and then it's rotated until uh, we have an angle theta uh, which is equals to uh, 45 degrees. So this will be our initial here, and this here will be uh, our final. And that rotation uh, it takes a time of um 0 0.08 second right so to find the change in the magnetic flux here we're going to use the second formula right because uh clearly we have uh the time here uh we have the number of tens and then let's see if we have uh the emf right because we need the emf yeah the question here also tells us uh, that the emf induced in the coil is seven volts so we can go ahead and uh, use that formula so for 11.2 here we're going to say that uh, the emf will be equals to minus n the number of tens on the coil right this is the formula we use multiply by the change in the magnetic flux divided by uh, the change in time so what is the emf uh, the emf is seven right and then what how many number of turns do we have on the coil? We have 400 uh, turns on the coil. And then we're looking for the change in the magnetic flux divided by uh, the change in time. Uh, the time is 0 0.08 seconds, right? So let me uh, put that in 0 0.08 seconds. So you can see here that uh, we're going to cross multiply. If we do that, uh, we're going to get minus 400 multiply by the change in the magnetic flux being equals to 7 multiply by 0 0.08 so the change in the magnetic flux will be equal to 7 multiply by 0 0.08 divided by minus 400 right uh, so we're expecting a negative value there and then if you put it in your calculator it should get minus 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, WB, right? Uh, that's way back. And then uh, we are done with 11.2. Now, what we need to do for 11.3 is to find the magnitude of the magnetic field. 
we want the magnitude of the magnetic field right so this is how we're going to do it uh, the symbol for the magnetic field is b right it's measured in tesla right to find that magnetic field we're going to use the change in the magnetic flux let me show you how we said that uh, the first formula you can use uh, is this uh, one right here right and then uh, the second formula you can use is this one that involved EMF, which we just used, right? So we're going to use uh, the first formula to find Yeah, the magnitude of the magnetic field. So let me show you what we're talking about. So the change in the magnetic flux We've already established that uh, that is magnetic flux final minus magnetic flux initial but then what you have to ask yourself is that how do we calculate magnetic flux initial and how do we calculate magnetic flux final right uh, the formula for magnetic flux is equals to the magnetic field multiplied by the area and then cos of the angle right so the change in the magnetic flux will be equals to uh, so we have b multiplied by the area and then cos of theta final minus b magnetic field multiplied by the area cos of theta initial right uh, this concept is a bit uh, confusing if you're doing it uh, for the first few times so you might want to you know take the video back or go watch other videos uh, that i've done on the topic uh, but anyway uh, stories in passing right uh, what i want you to realize here is that we have the magnetic uh, field and the area magnetic field and the area so we can pull that out as a common factor right uh, i'm not so sure i'm allowed to say pull that out but yeah let's see what happens so we have the change in the magnetic uh, flux being equals to uh, the magnetic field strength multiplied by the area and then multiplied by cos of uh, theta final minus cos of uh, theta initial in place of the change in the magnetic uh, flux we're going to have minus 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, that's what we just calculated in 11.2 right uh, that will be equals to the strength of the magnetic field what we are looking for and then the area the area we given the length of the side is three centimeters we have a square so length times breadth will just be side multiplied by side right but then the problem here the length is given in centimeters and we know fully well that in physics we are dealing with meters right so we have to convert that to meters uh, by dividing by a hundred right and then multiply by three divided by a hundred and then cos of theta final right so the final angle was 45 degrees so we're gonna have um cos of 45 minus cos of zero right and then now you can see that the only variable we have is the strength of the magnetic field right so the physics is done we're just solving the math now right uh, and then how are we going to do that we're going to divide both sides by the coefficient of the magnetic field let me show you what i'm talking about so this will give us uh b which is the strength of the magnetic field uh, being equals to minus 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3 uh, divided by uh, that coefficient there of the magnetic field right uh, which is uh, 3 divided by 100 multiplied by 3 divided by 100 and then we have cos of 45 minus uh, cos of zero right and then uh, it turns out that uh, if you put that in your calculator you should get 5.31 uh, t right tesla that's the si unit of magnetic field now let's do 11.4 the interesting equations the coil is now rotated through an angle of 45 degrees in a time of uh, 0 0.05 second don't forget don't forget don't forget initially uh, we had rotated through an angle of 45 degrees at a time of 
0 0.08 second, right? So from 0 0.08 second to 0 0.05 second. So now we rotate in it faster. What is the consequence of that as far as the induced EMF is concerned? Right, let's go to the formula. The EMF is equal to minus n, the number of turns on the coil, multiplied by the change in the magnetic flux, right? And then we divide that uh, by time. So if you look at this equation, you shall see that uh, the EMF induced is inversely proportional to the time taken, right? So if you increase the time, you reduce the EMF. If you reduce the time, you increase the EMF. Clearly, here we're going from 0 0.08 to 0 0.05. So we're reducing the time. If we reduce the time, the induced EMF should increase. No questions asked, right? And then... Uh, 11.5 says explain your answer to 11.4. Uh, we've done that, uh, but you can just say that uh, the EMF is inversely proportional uh, to the time taken, right? So if the time increases, the EMF shall go down. But in our case, the time is decreasing. So let's say uh, delta T uh, decreases. If delta T decreases, and then uh, EMF uh, shall increase right and yeah that's all we say in essentially uh let's do uh, 11.6 so 11.6 says the north pole of a bar magnet is put into a solenoid as shown in the sketch below right uh, clearly we have um, our bar magnet here and then uh, we are given the north pole and if the north pole is on that end then the south pole is in this end no questions asked right and then now the question is saying that uh, which pole will be induced at x right only north or south so this is the trick if you have a bar magnet and you are either pushing it into uh, the coil or outside of the coin right where you're pushing it in or where you're pulling it out right a pole that opposes the interaction will be induced what am i saying let me show you what i'm saying so let's say uh we're pushing it uh towards right so let's say uh we're pushing it towards right and then here we have the north and then here we have the south and then here we have and the coil right if we're pushing it towards uh the pole that will be induced here is the pole that uh, opposes the motion so because you're pushing it towards a pole that pushes it away will be induced right so if you're pushing it towards and then we have the north pole then here the north pole is going to be induced so that it can push it um away right so let's say uh we were pushing it uh, away right so if we're pushing uh, the magnet away, then a south pole would be in use because it's opposing the interaction, right? You're taking the magnet away, then a south pole will be induced so that it can pull it towards. So whatever you do with the magnet, a pole that opposes the interaction will be in use. So here, like we've said, uh, we're pushing it uh, towards, right? So a North Pole will be induced so that it can oppose that interaction. And then for 11.7, it says that in which direction will the induced current flow, right, only uh, from A to B or from B to A. So if we have North on that end, we should have South to that end, right? Uh, this is positive. This is negative. Uh, the conventional flow of current is from positive to negative right so it will be flowing from a uh, to b